Welcome to On Shoulders TV. In this episode, we are going to be wiring this dogbot leg. But more generally, we're going to be focusing on how to wire a robot. To connect the battery to the servos, we're going to use 16 gauge red and black wire as the primary wire. We're going to connect this wire to the servo using 24 gauge black and yellow wire. To power everything else, uh, the, the servos are the only thing that are going to be connected directly to the battery, which is 7.4 volts. To power everything else, which needs five volts, we're going to be using 24 gauge black and red wire. So that will power the sensors in the foot and another mystery sensor that we'll be talking about in the next episode. What about the wires that we'll be using for data? It turns out that 24 gauge wire is pretty expensive. So we're going to be using a hack that I'm actually pretty excited about. For all of the data leads, we are going to be using standard Cat5 cable, which as it turns out inside Cat5 cable is eight 24 gauge wires. So we're going to cut this cable to length. Then we're going to strip off the housing. But we have a problem. It turns out that on this dogbot leg, we have 11 inputs and outputs, a total of 11. But we only have eight distinct wires. So we're going to get around this by pairing wires. Let me show you what I mean about that. Right now, these wires are paired into solid and stripe. So here's an example. We have a blue solid and blue stripe wire that's paired. To unpair this wire, we're going to grab one end. I'm just using a clamp and a, a piece of wood. We're going to stick the other end in our drill here and unpair. There we go. And repeat. Now that we've unpaired the wires, we can pair them. So again, we only have eight distinct wires, but with eight distinct wires, we can pair in a very large number of ways. For our accelerometer that's built into the bottom of the leg, we need three data wires. So I'm going to choose to use blue, green, and orange for X, Y, and Z axes for the accelerometer and pair. Now, so long as I don't use blue, green, and orange together for anything else in the leg, I have a unique pair. So another example of a pair that I'll be using is for the, the hip servo right here, I'll be using blue solid and blue stripe. And that'll be the pair for this servo. Whereas for the accelerometer, I'm using solid blue, solid green, and solid orange. So unique pairs. So 
So now, how do we connect these wires to our electronics and to the battery? We're going to be using two types of connectors. The first is a bullet connector. It gets its name from its shape. Now, bullet connectors are used in most LiPo batteries. And this is how they mate, male and female. To connect these to our wire, we simply grab a piece of wood with a, a hole drilled in it, put the connector in, and we do this because the connector is about to get really hot. We touch a butane torch to it, or you can hold a soldering iron to it, get it hot, put in some solder in the bucket, dip the wire in, let it cool for at least 10 seconds to make sure the solder is strong, and you're done. For everything else, we are using 0.1 inch female crimp pins. Now this is also something I'm pretty excited about. I like to standardize, and by standardizing to these connectors, we gain a lot. To connect these to a wire, you could use some needle nose pliers, but it's very, very frustrating and easy to get wrong. So I invested in this crimp tool. And it does the job right every time. The crimp connectors, or the, the female crimp pins, they go in to the crimp connector housing. And I have this housing in one by one, one by two, one by three, and one by four. So we have, we have wires and we have connectors, but with just wires and connectors, you've got a rat's nest of wires. So we need to organize these wires, and we're going to organize them with three things. This is wire mesh. This will allow us to group all of the wires together. On the ends of the wire mesh, and whenever we have to sever the wire mesh, we are going to use heat shrink tubing. This heat shrink tubing will make the ends of the wire mesh, which would normally fray, very tight. And also hold any of the taps together. And finally, after running all of the wire and grouping it, we're going to keep the group in position with cable ties. And there we go. If you have any tricks that you use when wiring robotics, let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear about them. And I'll see you next time.